So welcome everybody to this webinar. Um, it's going to be on undertaking a qualitative evidence synthesis to support decision making in a Cochrane context. Um, this webinar has been completely oversubscribed and there's been a waiting list, which um, is a really good indication of the interest that there is in this topic. I only know of one person personally on the attendance list, and that's Karen Daniels at the South African Cochrane Centre. So hello, Karen. I hope that you're on board. Um, and welcome everybody else whom um, I think that you are new to me. So um, I look forward to getting to know you a little bit better. So let's crack on. I'm required to give a conflict of interest statement because I work with Cochrane, so I'm um, I'm not really conflicted, but I do actually have a vested interest in developing some of the tools that I'm going to talk about, but it's not a financial interest. To start with, I think that what I'm doing is, is summarising um, what we've published in a series of seven papers outlining this new Cochrane guidance in the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology. And I've put the link there in, um, uh, uh, in the box on the slide. So there are seven papers there which go into a lot more detail of what I'm talking about today. So do go and have a look at them. Um, I think that they are free to download up until about the 19th of June. So you've got a couple of days to get in and get the papers. The second thing is that this is looking at um, a part of a global health initiative, this webinar. Um, the World Health Organization is about to publish in the next few months a series in BMJ Global Health on systematic review methods for complex interventions implemented in complex health systems, particularly public health interventions. So some of you might be particularly interested in that guidance as well. So there's a lot of background material to support this webinar, which I hope that you will read. So let's start with a very basic question of what is qualitative research? Um, so Obviously, if you're a statistician, then you might actually talk about doing a qualitative synthesis too when a meta-analysis isn't possible. That's nothing to do with qualitative research, so move that to one side. What we're talking about is using a qualitative methodology and methods of qualitative data collection and analysis, and that would be things like focus groups, interviews, and observations that would produce narrative data, narrative findings that can be analyzed. And I've put on the slide here just a screenshot of the type of study that we're talking about, which would be the experiences and preparedness of family carers for best interest decision making of a relative living with advanced dementia, a qualitative study. So we're particularly talking about synthesizing this type of evidence. So what type of questions can qualitative research address? Well, for many of you, you'll know this. For those of you who've got no experience, um, particularly the decision makers want to know about patient experiences of living with a disease or a condition, patient experiences of living in a specific context with the disease or the condition. If there's an intervention, then experiences of the intervention and that also carers experiences and then the other key stakeholders such as healthcare professionals, etc. You can also use qualitative research to develop a new theory about something, for example, how something works or why people engage. Um, a theory about the stigmatization of healthcare, et cetera. So there's a lot of uses which are very exciting um, of qualitative research that have been underrepresented in decision making um, to date. So the types of findings from qualitative research that you'd actually take to synthesize would be the description of a phenomenon. Um, of, that might be a new word to you. So the phenomenon of interest is the issue of interest. So it might be women's perceptions of antenatal care would be your phenomenon of interest. The finding might define a new concept. You might create a new typology around something. You might be describing processes, which would be very important for implementation of an intervention. You might come up with explanations or theories or you might come up with the development of strategies. So these are the sorts of findings that you could actually be working with. What do they look like? Well, lots of findings, qualitative findings are presented as text, and that could be quotes, the author's analysis, or it could be tables with classifications and summaries of themes. You could have a conceptual figure or diagram, which is a finding. You could also have images or photographs or artwork. So there's a whole range of material that would actually count as findings that you might be able to synthesize. So that leads us nicely into Cochrane. 
um, the Cochrane collaboration. Um, the, the, you can see at the top here the logo is Trusted Evidence Informs Decisions and Better Health. Mainly Cochrane um, is about the synthesis of um, the effects of interventions in quantitative systematic reviews. But there are circumstances in which you can add a qualitative evidence synthesis for a specific purpose. Um, and that would be to better understand intervention heterogeneity, acceptability, feasibility, dose, reach, implementation, etc. But increasingly, we can also use qualitative evidence syntheses to better understand implementation of complex health system level interventions, such as public health interventions. And then we might actually look at things like feedback loops. So what happens when you um, implement an intervention in a health system? What are all the different responses in the different parts of the system? And what, how does the feedback loop around the system and what happens? And how does the health system adapt in response to an intervention being implemented? So we can look at all those things. But a qualitative evidence synthesis may also be undertaken to formulate the patient-centered questions to look at uh, uh, upfront in, in a, um, a quantitative systematic review. And you also might use qualitative evidence to identify and, and understand patient outcomes of interest when designing an intervention review. And I'll show you some examples of that later. So the current Cochrane model is that you can undertake a qualitative evidence synthesis that may um, be um, developed as uh, using a separate protocol. And then subsequently, the qualitative evidence synthesis would be integrated with the linked intervention effect review, which would be on the same intervention. So you can see here, there's, there's um, two examples here. You've got barriers and facilitators to the implementation of lay health worker programs. That's the qualitative evidence synthesis. That was undertaken with a standalone protocol. And then that was subsequently um, integrated. The findings were integrated with the quantitative intervention review, which was on lay health workers. So the same intervention, but the effects and the outcomes of the interventions um, were actually explored and explained with the qualitative um, synthesis, but with two different protocols. Increasingly, we're seeing qualitative evidence syntheses being undertaken as part of a mixed method protocol that includes conducting the intervention review. And you'll see there's an example there of exercise interventions for patients um, with um, hip or knee uh, or hip and knee osteoarthritis. So that's a single protocol, and within that single protocol, the qualitative evidence synthesis will be undertaken um, alongside the quantitative um, intervention effect review. And there'll be opportunities for those two reviews to speak to each other as the two reviews are carried out. So um, there are you know, opportunities to reflect early on what the qualitative evidence might be saying to then explore in more depth in the quantitative review, et cetera, and vice versa. So the two, um, the two reviews can and speak to each other. So those are the two models in Cochrane. Outside of Cochrane, you can be more flexible. Um, we, we in Cochrane are particularly looking at, at providing um, synthesized evidence in a decision-making context. But outside of Cochrane, you can do many standalone qualitative evidence syntheses that don't have to link with an intervention effect review. So. Um, this next slide, I thought that I would show you. Some of you will be very familiar with guideline panels and decision making processes. Um, and you, you, some of you may not be aware that there's a, a, a sort of a, a documentation that you use. Um, this is an example of the decide framework into which the quantitative and qualitative evidence is fed in order for the guideline panel to make a decision. So uh, quite a few systematic reviews on a topic will be commissioned. And what you're looking at specifically with the qualitative evidence synthesis is to address in a decision making context um, particular questions around acceptability, and you can see the sections of the DECIDE framework that I've picked out here is around acceptability, um, and is, it, is the intervention acceptable to key stakeholders? Is the intervention feasible to implement? And uh, there's a sort of a decision-making process all the way through. Um, other sections include things like values. How do people value the intervention? And what are the perceptions about the benefits and harms of the intervention? And these sections of the um, 
the decide frameworks are the sections that need a synthesis of qualitative evidence and the, 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 the findings of the syntheses are presented to the guideline panels who then draw on the, the, that evidence to actually populate the decide frameworks. And guideline panels have had less experience of dealing with qualitative evidence syntheses. So it's our job as qualitative evidence reviewers to make sure that we present the evidence to the panel in the most coherent and the best understandable way. So here is an example, and I'm sorry that this is a bit um, heavy, it's a busy slide, but this is an example from a NICE guideline. Now, NICE is the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, and it's our guideline producer in the United Kingdom. And this is a guideline on the long-term management of stroke. And it outlines quite nicely that evidence from qualitative and quantitative studies were used in particular parts of the guideline. So if we just look at the first bit, it says evidence from qualitative and quantitative studies, section 26.2.1. It talks about the inhibitory factors such as limited time, presiding professional uh, routines and the single opportunity to meet clinicians. And then it talks about secondary risk management. So there were three qualitative studies with low to moderate confidence in the studies that contributed to that finding. And then the second bit, which is about standard goal setting in stroke management and a standard goal setting meeting, which was held away from the patient and with standard and um, documentation. Um, that finding came from the quantitative study, which had low to moderate uh, confidence. And those the, the, the sort of combination of the quantitative and qualitative then um, was added to, um, with five, um, I think there were qualitative studies. And then that was the evidence was translated into the clinical guideline. And the actual um, evidence in the clinical guideline and what the clinical guideline said is, is posted at the bottom of the slide. So that's, that's how important the qualitative evidence is in understanding the big picture. Otherwise, guideline producers have just got the evidence of effect. They haven't got the patient perspectives. They haven't got how to implement it. They haven't got how to actually explain different types of effects or heterogeneity in effects or why the intervention works with some in some settings and with some people but not in others. So moving on to the question, you will all be aware that in a systematic review context, your question is the most important thing. And with a qualitative evidence synthesis, you start off with two positions. Is your question fixed or is it negotiable? And if it's fixed, it's often fixed because it's fixed to the PICO, the population intervention comparison or outcome question formulation framework, because it's attached to an effect review. We often, um, with a qualitative evidence synthesis, add on a SPICE question formulation framework because it's a bit more conducive to thinking about the setting, etc., and the qualitative side of things. And SPICE is setting, perspective, phenomenon of interest, the thing that you're interested in, comparison and evaluation. So the fixed questions, such as what factors affect implementation of X intervention X, act as anchors. So they anchor you down, all right? So that's very much what we do in Cochrane. If the question is negotiable um, and it can be explored as part of the review um, process, then the question can act as a compass. It can show you the direction that you can go. Um, and it might actually be then about how you refine questions into a, 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 a systematic review later. So for example, a compass question would be, what do women conceptualize as good antenatal care? And then, how, can, how women conceptualize antenatal care then actually goes into um, the quantitative intervention effect review. And um, colleagues have just done this particular review and I can, I've got the reference for you at the end. So there's two completely different types of questions that you might want to address with a qualitative evidence synthesis. <laughs> 